is my faithful Father calling me out of the dark. Night cannot whisper away what he said in the light. He is my firm foundation. My anchor won't be Alive, but my soul is on fire with his word. We listen to the sound of power on my lips. Jesus has broken the curse, he has never lost a battle. Should not bow low. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will 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 Our great defender Our strong tower he has never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. Our great defender, our strong tower. He has never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. To the sound of power on my lips, Jesus has broken the curse, He has never lost a battle. Who are you, great mountain, that you should not bow low? He never will, he never will. And 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 he never will. He is my faithful Father, calling me out of the dark. Night cannot whisper away what he said in the light. He is my firm foundation, my anchor won't be moved. Don't make a lie, but my soul is on fire with his word. And he never will. And he never will. 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 He never will. And he never will, he never will, my great God. And he never will, he never will, he never lost. And he never will, he never will. And he never 
for me. He is my faithful Father, calling me out of the dark. I cannot whisper away what He said in the light. He is my first foundation. My anchor won't be moved. Storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with His word. Hallelujah. He is our firm foundation. And he's never lost a battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for this day and how good the Lord is to us. Thank God for you that are viewing us. We thank you for your support and your prayers. We thank those for in-person worship uh, that you continue to love this church and uh, active members in this house and we just believe God for the whole extent of what he's promised us, and we praise him. And as usual, uh, we've asked you to bring paper Bibles with you because we want you to get in the habit of using your paper Bibles. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes we want to jump to other places. We just want to make sure that you have your Bibles with you. Amen? Amen. 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 And, and, and with that Bible... Or if you don't have one, wherever your Bible is, repeat this confession after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the interest of your word not only brings light, it brings life. And Holy Spirit, guide us to where we need to be. Open our hearts that we can receive. Open our minds that we can understand and know. We thank you for revelation, knowledge, and wisdom that will flow out. And God, help me to speak the oracles that you've assigned to our life. And God, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Today we want to talk about the healing power of Holy Communion. Next week, I'll continue in what we, we've been doing in Acts, the 16th chapter. And we're going to bring up some more good stuff next week. But, but for right now, since this is a first Sunday and this is the day that we celebrate communion, sometimes we can get so glib about stuff and, and that we don't, we don't give it the stock and the importance that it needs to have. And so we're going to talk about what communion means to the life of the believer. What it means. How important it is to the life of the believer. That you participate in the things that Jesus said do until he comes back again. Amen. Amen. And, and we want to do a lot of church stuff, but these are the things Jesus said do. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, the healing power in Holy Communion. 
Holy Communion is known by other names. The Lord's Supper and Eucharist. Many faith communities call it the Eucharist. Catholics and I believe Episcopals and so on and so forth. In the middle of the word Eucharist, E-U-C-H-R-A-R-I-S-T. In the middle of Eucharist, the word or name is, a, is, 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 the, is the word cherish, which is C-H-A-R-I-S, Eucharist. And cherish means love. So when you hear the word Eucharist, it means love feast. Everybody say love feast. And I wanted to teach on the Holy Communion today because I believe the church has gotten casual about the observance. You think it's okay to miss it. Oh, it's just Communion Sunday. We do that as part of the service. It is part of the service, but it is an important part of the service because of what it imparts and what it causes to happen. And so the observance of Holy Communion established by Jesus, it, it, it causes two ordinances. Jesus set forth two ordinances. Number one was baptism, and number two was the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, or the Eucharist. Jesus established those. And he said, do them until I come back. Then a global commitment to witness to people. After witnessing, the next word was to baptize. Are you listening? And then, let me go to another uh, uh, denomination. The Catholic Church celebrates what is called the Mass. And the Mass has basically four or five parts. But the culmination of the Mass is the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper. Where a priest holds the bread which is known as host and a cup with wine in it which represents the blood of Jesus. But in the Catholic Church, the celebration is, is, is a little different because they believe that when the host or the bread and the cup are dedicated and sanctified on the altar and presented back to God and set aside for a few minutes, that it actually becomes the blood and body of Jesus Christ. It's called transubstantiation. It's a big word. It means change from one use to another. And so they believe it is actually the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. With folk outside of Catholicism, non-Catholics, it is considered a memorial service. And, and this memorial service comes from the scripture in Luke 22 and 19. That's why we, we call it a memorial service. And he took bread. We'll find it quickly. Are you there? 22 and 19. Twenty-two and nineteen, and he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, "This is my body, which is given for you." And here is the part where we we turn it into and we we understand it as a memorial service rather than Jesus's actual body and blood. Now we're not against them because. I think there is a beauty in, in the Catholic celebration of Mass. I think it's all the body of Christ. There is a holiness in it. There is a, a sanctification in it. Let me say this. that Let me address the reading first. And it says, do this in what? In remembrance of me. Remembrance means there was something that happened that I need to remember often. And so when you excuse yourself from communion, 
You are disobeying one of the ordinances Jesus gave. He said, do it remembering me. See, the blessing comes in remembering where the source of your deliverance came from. And sometimes we are so glib with it, we don't put stock in it. I remember a day when first Sundays were the most packed Sundays in church. Because it was Hallowood, it was blessed, it was something that we need to do, it's something that we cherish. Because when I took that cup, it's something about it, I always felt different. Because number one, obedience makes you feel better. See, if you disobey everything, you're always on the wrong side. Disobedience makes you left-footed all the time. Trying to make, convince everybody, this is the way I am. This is what I need to do. No, 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 no. There is no gray area in this area. These are the two things that Jesus did. And notice nobody falls out about baptism or communion unless you're trying to be denominational and say, you, you haven't been baptized in the name. Because we got to find something. But really, that's the lesser place of argument in the church. He said, do it. In remembrance or do it remembering me. How many of you know it's a blessed thing to remember what the Lord done for you? I, I don't take credit. I didn't do it. I wasn't that great. I ain't that wonderful. Jesus did it for me. And we're going to talk about how, how much he did for us. And so when you come to church, one of the reasons why you come to church is to remember Jesus. You worship God and you remember Jesus. And we get crazy. We don't want to remember Jesus. We want to get caught up in what we think we ought to do in church or who we are in church and what we are and, and, and how we need to operate in church. But my question is, do you remember Jesus? There's a song that, that Coletta Harris, Bishop Harris, used to sing all the time. Always remember, always remember, remember Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. You need to remember who Jesus is and what Jesus did. That sets you straight. It reduces your pride. Because as good as you are, you couldn't die for yourself. Oh, Lord. On the Sunday of the Holy Communion uh, that is celebrated, it should not be optional to attend. You should get up on that morning knowing that it's going to be communion today. I must have it. I must celebrate Jesus this way. Now, it doesn't matter. You can do it every day of the week. You can do it four times a week. You can do it four times a day. He said, as often as you do this, you do show forth my death, burial, and resurrection until I come again. So with that, and if strength comes from communion, and if healing comes from communion, I would advise that you would find some way or another to get you some communion stuff at your house. Uh, uh, are you hearing me? It doesn't necessarily have to be this cup and this bread. This is what it's involved to. In the olden days, or, or my younger days, we had glass uh, 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 cups in a tray with, with crackers broken, saltine crackers. And, 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 and if you get stuck in that tradition, you won't, you'll say, that's not communion. Just like the King, New King James still bother people. The NIV bothers people. Okay, give, give me the old King James version. And I'm saying God saved the king, but there's something else happening. It, 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 is, it is one of the, 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 the translations. 
And the saints that we read about many in many days, uh, uh, in, in many of our sermons, they didn't have this whole Bible. They only had one book and they treasured it with their life. Some of them only had John. Some of them only had Mark. Some of them only had Luke. But they treasured the Bible to the point that they would die for the Bible. And so when it was time to put the whole Bible together, the treasured pieces were had and pulled together. Are you there? They only had one piece. If they only had John, they had enough to get to heaven with it. Come on, somebody. (laughs) If they only had Matthew, they had enough to get to heaven with it. Come on, come on. If they only had pieces of Acts, they had enough to get to heaven. Be ye baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sin in the name of Jesus. That's in Acts. Come on. They made it to heaven. With just one, you got 66 and still struggling. What did the Lord want me to do? 66 of them. (laughs) Are you all out there today? Read one of them. (laughs) What I was about to say about communion is, I was listening to a young lady They didn't have a cup and they didn't have this nice package of bread on on top and and all that kind of stuff. People see this bag. They don't know what's in it. It's it's a cup with some some juice, grape juice, and there's a little pull-off thing. It's it's so modern. It's wonderful. It's convenient. And as convenient as it is, we still have folk that, that forsake coming to get this cup and to remember Jesus. Because we're churchy, but we're not biblical. There is a difference. And, 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 and this lady said, we didn't have that. And the girl that was ministering to this other girl, she said, what do you have in your house? She said, I've got some, some, some apple juice and, and, and I got a, 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 a wafer. She said, get it. She said, the juice represents his blood. And the wafer represents his body. As often as you do this, you do show forth my death, burial, and resurrection till I come again. Do this in remembrance of. So while this piece is important, the remembering is just as important. As you take it, your mind is supposed to go back to the day when Jesus saved you, picked you up, turned you around. Go back to what he did to get you saved. Are you there? And what I was about to say, get some of these cups, go go to the Whatever store, you can order them online, get you some. And when you're going through a place that you need healing, you need forgiveness, you need to come into communion with the Lord, fellowship with the Lord, just just take communion. Just get out your cup. You say, it's time for, 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 for bread and juice. It's time for communion because there's healing in it. Come on, come on, come on. You, you just get it and celebrate. B- buy you a special glass if you have to. Get you some well to drink. Go get your best china that you're saving for a special occasion you haven't used in 40 years. <laughs> Grandma's teacups that you're waiting to have a tea service and ain't nobody even doing that no more. Pull them out. Pour you something in it and put a cracker. It could be a biscuit. Say, Lord, I remember. Thank you, God. (laughs) Glory to God. Y'all not hearing me today. You don't even understand because you're only into the part of worship service that you're into. But when it's time for the word, you tune off and that's the part you need to get. Lord, remember, if you're going through a place in your marriage, in your household, in your family, just, just, just pull a cup out. Say, God, I'm remembering that, that with what you did to get us here, that there is healing available yes. Yes. in all of those places. Lord, re- 
Come on, come on. I, I just got messed up a little bit because, because sometimes we got help right in our refrigerator. All we need to do is just pick it up and say, you know what? I ain't wrestling that way. Give me a cup and give me a, a, a cracker. Uh, <laughs> it's time for me to take my eyes off of me and remember the Lord and remember what he's done for me and that makes everything else kind of pale in comparison oh it ain't that rough yet because I got help in this and it's just a little cup and it's a little bread are you out there today I dare you to just reach up and say Lord remember me because today, I remember you. I remember what you've done for me. I remember what you continue to do for me. And I, oh, sh- oh God, 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 God. <laughs> Anybody got a remembrance in you? Anybody can go back. You just didn't appear. Something helped you along the way and it was greater than you. Lord, I remember. I remember what you did on Calvary. It ain't no slough thing for me. I ain't religious. I'm biblical. I remember. Why is communion mandatory? Because it helps in two ways. Collectively and individually. When the collective comes together, the group, the the church at worship comes together. There is a a, a synergy, an energy uh, from heart to heart and breast to breast and spirit to spirit thing that happens that brings relational stuff in, that, 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 that likens the communion that's already happening between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's good for us to come together. Collectively. Then individually, I can get all by myself. Sometimes you're going through a personal hell. You get by yourself and you say, Lord, I got a little bread and I got a cup of water. I'm doing it in remembrance of you because, hey. I know you the deliverer. Not by power. And not by might. But my word. But by the spirit. Because your word is spirit. And it's life. (laughs) So when my spirit is lacking. I need your spirit. (laughs) to, To take over. Because I just spend a little time and settle myself and get quiet by myself and take a little piece of bread and a little water and say, Lord, no matter what is going on, I'm doing it in remembrance. Or you going to get this in a minute. Communion means to become intimately relational. Commune. There's another word that lines up with communion. It's called intercourse. I'm almost scared to mention it because we go base when we hear intercourse. But intercourse means that at the most intimate level of my spiritual self, I enter the presence of God and and there is relational stuff of me going in that comes out from him and and, and it transfers back and forth because I communed with him. Jesus did it often. He communed with the Father often. Communion itself 
When you see this like this, it is the total picture of salvation. With one sighting of this should give you the whole sweep of salvation. My God. When you do not take communion, you remove yourself from the healing available through communion. You remove yourself from hell. When you do not take communion, you remove yourself from the forgiveness that is available through communion. When you come to this table, you can judge yourself and and, and get forgiven in one sweep. Wow. If we would judge ourselves, we won't be judged. You won't see the judgment seat. So this is a good opportunity to come and judge yourself and say, say, I'm I'm a mess. Are you there? When did it implement? It, It was implemented the night, that Thursday night known as Monday Thursday on the Christian calendar. And, and, and where he took, took bread and when he had broken it said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. It is important to remember in remembrance of what was done for us should become a treasured part of our life. This should become a treasured part of our life. It should become personal. He did it for me. Treasured. I can't miss it because I'm in that. This is me. I'm in this. This is me. No, I can't. I ain't going to church today. This is me. I'm in this. I'm holding the trophy of remembrance of my salvation. You are proclaiming faith and belief in what Jesus has done and continues to do. At the cross, God took all of our sickness and diseases and put them on Jesus. All of our sickness. Everybody say that. All of my sickness. sickness. Whatever you may be afflicted with, it went to Jesus first. It went on him first. Originally, our perfect bodies through sin became afflicted. So we needed another perfect body to make us well. Isaiah, looking some 700 years before Jesus appeared, said this in Isaiah 53 and 5. Find that quick. Isaiah 53 and 5. When you have it, say amen. Isaiah 53 and 5. And it said there. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes. We are what? So, he was chastened. That means he was punished for us. Chastened. Punished for us. He was beat up for our sins. Before the cross and on the cross, he was beat up for our sins. 
Each strike he took meant we were healed the moment they hit him. The moment that they hit him because of what Isaiah had prophesied at that moment 2,000 years ago we were healed in 2021. At that moment. Do you have healing? Yeah. When? Right now. Why? Because of what he did 2,000 years ago. And because it fulfills scripture that predated that by 700 years. You were healed. Then, so you are healed now. Are you there? So you hanging on to something that was before the cross. Do you hear the whip? Do you hear the thud of the beating? Bam. Whoosh. Bam. If you can hear it, you ought to know then, I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm delivered. With his nails, with his hands stretched out, and they were nailed in his, in his hands. Oh, Jesus. But thank you, I'm delivered. Oh, you make it glib, but it ain't glib. It's this is the essence of what you should believe. First Peter 2 and 24. 1 Peter 2 and 24. It's set there. Do you have it? Come on. Come on. Two and twenty-four. When you have it, say amen. amen. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we having died to sins might live for righteousness. By whose stripes you, y'all don't have it then. Because you would know what that next word. By whose stripes you, it didn't say are or going to be, were here is past tense. You were, you were. There is healing in the bread when you partake in Holy Communion. Jesus tells us in Luke 22 and 20, just, just write it down. That the cup is the new covenant or new testament between God and his people. Meaning from this forward, we don't need another sacrifice. We don't need to kill anything else sacrificially. The last sacrifice we ever needed was Jesus Christ. As far as for sin and atonement. But it released us to become priests and priestess of sacrifice. We have one sacrifice that, that, that we give. It's the sacrifice of praise. From a living, moving person. My God, my God. A new commandment, a new covenant, a, an agreement confirmed with Jesus' blood poured out. Apostle Paul tells us that the blood of Jesus brings forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1.14. Find that. Colossians 1.14. It's said there. 
Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of what? The forgiveness of sins. When you run around and say that I can't help sinning, that's a lie. You can't help. That got quiet. When when we drink from the cup, we are declaring that we are forgiven and have been made righteous through Jesus' shed blood on the cross, which puts us in right standing. Right standing and righteous does not mean I'm righter than anybody else. It just means I'm back in the family. I'm right. So because of that, you have entree to come into the presence of God. My God. Hebrews 4.16. Because of your right standing, God doesn't save you and leave you without. He calls you close. And he calls you in. So because of that, he said, because of what I said before, he said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Since we are in the right place at the right time, you got a right to walk through the door and obtain mercy and grace for a time of weakness. So you are without excuses. I can't help myself. That's a song. I need you and nobody else. Sugar pie, honey bun. I'm sorry. You have grace to help. Because the door has been thrown open. Enter in. Therefore, that means forgetting all that stuff that you were hanging on to. Therefore, come boldly. Not begging. Lord, if you will. Hear my knee bent, broke down prayer. Come boldly that we may obtain mercy. Not come arrogantly, you got to do. But come boldly because you have a right to be there. See, somewhere you got a right to be. You don't act like you don't belong. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. When you got a right to be, she has a right to be in our home. She don't act like she belong in our house. She don't belong in our house. She have a right to be there. My kids don't have as many rights as as now, you know, as they used. But they still think they have a right. They still go in the refrigerator. You know why they do it? Because their daddy has made them righteous. How did I make them righteous? What you want, come on in and get it. (laughs) Thank you. And your father has made you righteous. Come on in and get it. You have help and mercy and grace in a time of need. 
ought to put your hand together and give him a prayer. How many of you know you got grace today? Oh, you didn't slide by. You ain't slick enough. You got grace. And where judgment wanted to say, but, but I'm right. Mercy said, but you can't have them now. <laughs> Holy communion is not a ritual to be observed, but a blessing to be received. Receive it today. Anybody going to receive it today? Anybody going to take your healing today and take your forgiveness today and take your troubleshooting today from the Lord, your, the power? You're going to take your mercy and you're going to take your grace today because you have a right to have it. You're just going to take it in Jesus' name. You're going to come boldly and get what you need in a time of need. You're going to just take it. You're going to take, take it, take it, take it. Take what you need. Make no excuses. Take no hostages and don't feel embarrassed for getting what you need from the Lord. Take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let anybody make you feel bad about your communion with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Make you feel that you don't have to be socially correct, but I know the Lord. And I know he's a way maker. I know he saved me. And I know he kept me when you were nowhere around. My days with you is nothing but what the days I've spent with the Lord in his presence, thanking him for his goodness. When I didn't even know nothing about you, I knew about Jesus. Yeah. You got healing. You got deliverance. So in Jesus' name, I declare you heal from the... <laughs> from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I declare that anything that's not like the Lord, is rebuked. I rally and ratify myself with Cal. You were healed by his stripes. So in Jesus' name be made whole. <laughs> so I rebuke every infirmity. I don't care what his name is. It's new, his name is Corona. But 2,000 years ago, he went to that cross. <laughs> so be made whole. Let's celebrate together. Get your cups. Oh, 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 chicken. Somebody ought to thank him. This is a good place to praise him. Open your mouth. Give him a good praise. Come on, come on, come on. Come on give him a good praise. Hallelujah. Come boldly. Come on. There it is. There it is. You were hella with communion in this house. You will run to celebrate. You will remember Jesus. <laughs> you will remember Jesus. Open your mouth, give him a praise, Jesus. Ooh. Come on, come on, open your mouth, remember Jesus. Remember Jesus.
Come on, come on, I'm not ready. Come on, remember Jesus. Repeating after me. Put your bread in your hand. Stand to your feet. Yeah, go shake it. Somebody just wave it and celebrate it. Thank you, God, for this. <laughs> Thank you, God, for this. Somebody's going to see new liberty today. <laughs> Somebody's going to walk freer today. Always keep them on you. <laughs> Repeat after me. I believe, I believe and, I and I receive in Jesus' name. Come on, family, let's eat together. I received today, Jesus. Always keep it on your mind. Always keep it on your mind. Take your cup. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood, your sin free, disease free, poverty free life is in your blood. Through your blood, you shed on the cross, I am forgiven of all my sins, past present and future and made completely righteous today I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous which is preservation healing wholeness provision provision Come on, let's drink together in Jesus' name. <laughs> Keep standing. Lift both hands up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah, go shake it young. For your powerful presence, thank you, God. Hallelujah. For what you sanctified in this house. What you settled in this house. Oh, God, we purpose to do your will. And your will alone. Thank you today. Anybody got a praise, you just open up your mouth and you tell him something. Woo! And the people praise the Lord. <laughs> and the people praise the Lord. Glory to God. And the people praise the Lord. Come on, and the people praise the Lord. 
Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Release the rivers, God. Come on, come on, release the rivers, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I want you to give him the best shout you can give him. Come on, give him the best shout you can give him. Can be seated, Jesus. You can be seated. I want you to do something for me. Put your hand around yourself, both arms, and give yourself a big hug. Tell Jesus, tell Jesus, thank you for loving me. Come on, you got to know you loved. <laughs> Always keep him on your mind. Always keep him on your mind. Always keep him. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.